the Shark Tank. Mm. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and today, I have a, I'm going to say young lady. Oh, <clears throat> all right. Young lady. I was going to go with middle age, but I'm just going to, yeah, I like this. I like you a lot I'm more gonna, now. <laughs> I'm going to say young, I'm, I'm here with a young lady. Mm. I want to say Sherry DeVille, am I correct? You know what? It's not my real name, so it doesn't matter how you pronounce I, it, but I, I pronounce it Sheree only because Sheree. Sheree Curry from The Runaways pronounced it like that. And yeah. she's an, look, that bitch wore lingerie on stage in the 70s, so. Hey, we're going to give yeah. it to her. Respect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to, I don't want to disrespect your name, none of that. I just, I, I want to see if I, I yeah, said yeah. it right or, you know, I, I saw, you know, it came across my desk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it I saw it. It came across your desk, It came it? across my desk. And, you okay. know, I've watched a couple of, I, I've watched a couple of podcasts on so. you. Yes. Not just the ones that you've mm -hmm. done on Plug Talk. Mm -hmm. you Which know? were good. Which were great. You know, I had sex like right about here. Yeah, I feel like you, that aura is still in this podcast. You are a um, you are America's stepmom mm -hmm. to the porn. I am, I am. I'm a good mommy. You're you're a good mommy. <laughs> okay. I, I, I want to let's let's talk about you know the porn industry and mm. how did how did that come about for you? Uh, so I had no intention of getting into porn. Not that I didn't want to get into porn, but like. How do you get into porn? You know, I was living in Nashville. It'd be like saying, hey, you want to be an astronaut? Like, yeah, it seems cool to go to the moon, but like, how the fuck would you even do that? Yeah. Especially back then. This is pre like OnlyFans and clip stores, you know, before yeah. the tube sites, yeah. you know, before, you know, anyone in any state could just create porn in their bedroom and upload it onto the internet and do porn. I remember you were saying yeah. something. I watched, I watched something on you, a special. I like to call Ooh, them specials. Special. Yeah. Uh, I, I watched a special on you and you were like, you know, I remember things be predated to social media. Oh, yeah. And, you know, uh, things like we that. We had Twitter toward the beginning of my, like, tenure in porn, but that mm. was about it. Instagram wasn't, if it was around, it wasn't really relevant. Yeah. yeah. So we were just, back then it was just taking bookings from companies and hoping that companies liked you. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I actually, so I'm a physical therapist and wow. physical, physical therapists make okay money, but I wanted more spending money if I'm, if yeah. I'm being completely honest. Yeah. So I started doing like super casual nude modeling on the weekends yeah. and uh, my agent found me online. Yeah. Then my porn agent and she's yeah. like, would you like to come to LA and shoot porn? And I'm like, what? What? Like what? Yeah. Like I didn't even think I didn't know or think I was necessarily gonna like it, but I just couldn't say no to that. Like right. I couldn't like get into my 90s or hopefully however long I live and be like yeah. woulda coulda shoulda. Like yeah. I want to be like look at the shit Nana did. I'm gonna, you I'm know? gonna like, I, and I respect that. And I'm gonna tell you this, and I respect that. I, I, I want to jump into it because it seems like you know this wasn't just something that you thought of today or last year. Mm -hmm. This is something that's probably already been on your mind for a very long time. Yeah. Maybe I've back in loved... the early nineties. I mean oh, uh, yeah. not your age, but you like you said, you, you call yourself a middle aged woman. So mm -hmm. I think that there was I'm gonna ask you this. If you mm -hmm. were you ever into prostitute you ever thought about prostitution or things like that that was never my jam mostly because well, it's just like weed like i smoke a shit ton of weed now yeah. but i didn't smoke weed at all till i moved to california and it was legal yeah like i'm that girl yeah. you know like i don't want to lose my physical therapy license you right. know kind of like right. stick to the rules but i, I understand but i'm that. not against i mean obviously i fuck on film i'm not against it granted but i'm just saying like do you are you like, have you ever done anything like that? Have you ever engaged before you like went to porn, before mm -hmm. you thought of doing anything? You were a young girl at one point in time. You were, you were a young girl at mm -hmm. one time. Did you ever, and for, for money, did you ever take consideration like, well, fuck it, like I'll, I'll go, you know, shit, for some money. I'm already like to have, I like to have fun. Like you said, you're a swinger. Mm -hmm. You like to have fun, right? Yep. You like to have fun. I that's do that's like what to have you're fun. in. So were there ever any times that, 
you know, you were low and you wanted that extra spending money, like you said, and went and engaged for certain things to. Well, like I money. said, I did like, I don't know if you know the website. I don't even know if it's still around. Uh, mm. Model Mayhem, mm. which was like when you say they're models and photographers, I'm using that word uh, very loosely. These are like guys with cameras mm -hmm. taking yeah. nude pictures of girls who are willing to do it. So yeah. like, I mean, that's close in a way you know i'm sitting there for whatever a few hundred dollars an hour you know yeah. sitting in some dude's living room butt ass naked letting right. him take photos of me so right. yeah well, I, well I, I watched i watched i was i was driving down last <laughs> night and i watched you know I, I i sat back and i watched i think you had did one with another lady it was like 50 minutes it's like 50 minutes you had did, and that's not the, that's not the name yeah. of the show, but oh, it was like 50, 50 minutes, minutes you had did. <laughs> I think she was also in the industry as mm -hmm. well. She had some curly hair, and you guys Cute. had sat down. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Holly Randall, probably. Holly Randall. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw yeah, you sit down. Her. Now, mind you, mm -hmm. I heard you on Plug Talk talk mm -hmm. about, you know, did Lena ever get... Adam a hooker? Yeah. That was, that was one of your yeah. questions. That was like one of your biggest yeah. questions. Why? Well, because I have a lot of friends, like, to me, that's, like, the easiest way for someone who's shy to have a threesome. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's a little intimidating to have to go out and pick someone up at a bar and make sure they're cool with all this stuff. Like, isn't it easier to, like, know what you're getting? You're getting a professional. You're getting someone that's tested. You're getting someone that's going to, like, leave at the end of the night who's not going to be, like, blowing up your partner's phone if that's not your jam. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, Yeah. Well, totally to go, down. Well, to go from that to when I saw you on uh, Holly Randall, I think her name is. Mm -hmm. yeah, Holly Randall's her. show. Shout out to Holly Randall. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this, sweetie, shout out to you. <laughs> I, I saw you on her show, and she mm -hmm. asked you because I believe you both are in the sex industry, like the sex yeah, industry, Yeah, she's a correct? really famous photographer. Yeah. Her mom was one of Playboy's first, I think the first female photographer but Playboy But she she's in the sex industry as well, right? She has shot uh, scenes. No. Holly, she's no, she's a, a photographer, although I think maybe one year ago she started in OnlyFans. Okay. So I'm pretty sure I, I did look at the beginning of her OnlyFans yeah. tenure because I wanted to see her boobies, right? Yeah. Um, but at that time she wasn't doing any like boy girl or girl girl content. So, right. Yeah. Well, I would heard you in her segment as well because, you know, to, to link up. Adam and Lena, you did the plug talk. Mm -hmm. And to link that up, I had heard you say also when Holly had asked you, she was like, what was your most favorite scene you ever shot? Mm -hmm. What was the, your most favorite scene? And, and I'll tell you what it was. I have a lot was. of them. Tell me what I well, said to the, Holly. The, well, I'm like, I've you... a lot of really good ones. Well, the, the, the <laughs> most a good lot of really good ones. <laughs> I know. And I tell you this, the most best, one, bestest mm -hmm. of bestest you ever said was, mm -hmm. well, my favorite one that I shot was me playing or portraying a hooker mm -hmm. and me picking up a John. Plot. Plot. So I'm just trying to like <laughs> core link both of them like that's why I asked you you know have you ever have you ever did you ever do any type of prostitution when you were younger or you know just like fuck it you know I'll 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 go engage I was more of a swinger like no money's involved but it yeah. kind of has that vibe in that they're strangers yeah. you know you go into the club maybe with your partner maybe without your partner mm -hmm. and especially as a female it's pretty fucking easy to get to bang almost anybody you want at a swingers club. And I had been doing that since, oh God, I was probably like, maybe like 23, 24, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. So you've been in that game for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and you know, I heard some things that you had said also, you were like, um, I think, I believe it was along the lines, you were like, well, you know, I like BDSM. Mm -hmm. You were like, I like that a lot. And you mm -hmm. were like, you know, I feel like, they kind of taint it in the porn industry. Sometimes. Sounds like it sounds like that's something that you want to do beyond that light because you were like, well, if it doesn't make me cry, yeah. if it doesn't like you have to make me feel it. I watched it. Yeah. I, I know everything yeah. about you. Everything, everything that you really spoke I feel like on. You're and in it, my mind. I'm all the way in your <laughs> mind. <laughs> I am all the way in your mind. And when you were like, you know, you, you don't just beat my ass. Okay, cool. You don't mind. Like you mm -hmm. said, yeah, fuck me up. You didn't care. You said, fuck me up. I'm all right it's with that. It's the psychological part beat that I me love. Up. I'm, yeah. I'm cool with that. I'm, yeah. I'm a, you know, I, I'm a Virgo, mm -hmm. too. 
I'm a Virgo. All I know the best you are. I knew are that about you already. Could you see it in my face or did you no, just I already know? Knew. Yeah. <laughs> no, I already knew. I've done all my homework. You're like, she looks anal retentive. She must I be a Virgo. A, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Virgo too. And I understand that, you know, us as, you know, us being us, you know, we like sex. We like mm -hmm. things like that, you know, but sometimes you have to control yourself just somewhat yeah. and pick and choose how you move. What I don't mm -hmm. understand is, especially you, because me and you, we're, we're a little up in age. You got a few on me, but neither here nor mm -hmm. there. And I, you're still beautiful and vibrant, but you got to understand, like, we have to, you have to master that control. You know, when you had said, like, you know, I like BDSM, I mm -hmm. like things like that, and I want a person to make me cry. Well, then what if you're really crying for your life and that person doesn't think that that's what you're doing? Right. So that's why I feel like, especially in like that type of like super, super intense play, like mm. safe words, communication, safe words, because, you know, I love the fantasy. I never heard of it. you in the Holly interview. Yeah, she's so hot. I, I'll tell you this. I'm not. I'm, I never heard you like in the Holly interview because you were feeling the way you it came off. You were like, I'll step past the screen to get what I'm really looking for. I'll step past that. Like if we got to do some shit on the dark web, then on the all dark right, web. Cool. I'm just being honest. Like the way that I looked at it, I was like, okay, man, my soccer mom. She's like, I'll take it a little bit further just a tad bit and I was like no I don't want to see you in that light I don't want to see you get harm to you well yeah, yeah I mean there's there's a difference between like harm and consensual harm if that makes sense you know what yeah. I mean so like with anything that's why like porn is kind of such an amazing safe space I remember because, you talking about yeah. that yeah like I feel like I've tried like I was you know, I did all kinds of stuff, but I feel like I've done my most wild things on screen, yeah. not off screen, which is kind of crazy. But if you think of it, like even just logistically, like how would you organize like a 15 dude gangbang like right. on Craigslist? Like that seems not safe. Right. <laughs> you well, know what the I mean? But you... I want it. I want it so badly. Right. So like to be able to like have that with like super professionals that are amazing at fucking everybody's tested in like a safe environment is like to me a dream come true because yeah. it's something that like like on the inside I want like I watch porn like that I fantasize about stuff like that but I'm probably a little too much of a wimp to go out and like get that in real life right well, what so if to be that able urge, to get it but what if that urge because I'm gonna tell you this <laughs> like my shit's my show is like kind of for the troubled youth yeah. of women. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> the and like youth. if you think that I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. If you think that like the things that you're thinking about, I got girls on this show that's been doing it for years. Yeah. Sk uh, uh, unfortunately. Well, it depends if they're it. safe. It's like it, it yeah. no, they're not. They're not you're like, no, they're so not. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this, and but but I'm gonna say this. Like yeah. it all starts with that spark of that thought process. Yeah. Of, of saying like I might be too much of a wimp, but after a while, you build up to it. You mm. build up to actually doing mm -hmm. it and actually stepping out and being like, well, you know, that that urge becomes right. a little like, bit greater than what you're doing. Right, like your your sexual urge like somehow supersedes your like, yeah. hey, this might not be a good idea. That's why yeah. it kills, it, it, it kind of kills me, to be honest with you, you know, to see a lot of women, like I feel like it's, more of an urge. It's not a business. I thought that like women that got in this, it was for a business. They Depends didn't want their, who. they didn't want their fam. I'm gonna tell mm -hmm. you this: the ones that I knew didn't even want their family to know. That's impossible. They didn't want their house. Maybe back in I the know, 1990s. Women, no, that's that's bullshit. They didn't even want their families to know. The and they could be making know. hundreds of thousands. How? The you can huh? say, their families you, are gonna find if your shit's no, online, your family's gonna find out. Not everybody was moving online, and you could still move online and bypass. The wow. Just being honest with maybe. you. Maybe. Just being okay. Yeah. Maybe. I yeah. mean, I guess, huh? I, I feel We're like if talking. you're like posting your stuff on like yeah. OnlyFans and Pornhub and all those places, yeah. you know, some friend of That's friends, free cousin, shit, though. whatever. But to me, but to me, and I'm not gonna say OnlyFans, yes, you can make some money, but you can maybe might. That's too many words in between the bread. That's true. That's too many words I mean, in between even like the money. Everyone says like, oh, top 1% of OnlyFans. But like, 
a lot of uh, models have two OnlyFans accounts, a free one, right, that just drives traffic, and a paid one. Yeah. And my free one is in the top 1% of OnlyFans. It doesn't make jack. You know what I mean? Like, but what that really tells you is that even anything below the top 1%, like, you're not making a living. Yeah. So that's literally 99% of performers on model fans, on model fans, on OnlyFans, it, it wouldn't be enough to pay LA rent. It wouldn't yeah. be enough to pay LA living expenses. And to put yourself out there sexually, considering like the crazy ass stigma that the United States specifically has against sex work, that's probably not gonna be a good idea. Cause like, you're not making jack money. You're gonna have a real hard time finding any other job. So like, what'd you do it for? I hope that the answer is like personal passion. Cause if the answer was money and you're 99% of OnlyFans models, you did not meet your goal. Well, you know, I mean, think about it. Only fans is going to tax the shit out of you already. Well, I mean, they, every they, job. They tax the shit out of you already, not to mention the IRS. I mean, IRS, any yeah. job. I mean, it just depends on how much money you're actually making, how much residual mm -hmm. is actually coming in. Mm -hmm. That's how they tax you. Yeah, I mean, like, your your income of, like, all your different income sources, the IRS knows. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, <laughs> they know. know. They, You're they, not getting away with anything. They know it all. But for you, to me, I feel like, you, well, obviously, I, I've heard you say, like, they built your channel for you. The fans built your channel for you. People wanted you to be the well, stepmom yeah. of the USA Because I, I came up you know, before it was really like, I mean, yeah, I had like my own little website in the beginning, but before it was like crazy lucrative to, to do your own content, I worked for years, other people booking me for shoots, marketing me, paying advertising dollars to advertise my films, right? So they, meaning like the porn world, decided that I was gonna be a MILF, right? So then when it became hella lucrative to make my own content, I'm like, look, I could start a new brand if I really wanted to, but why? You know, all these other brands have spent the past, you know, eight years spending their advertising dollars on my name. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna take that and monetize it now myself. Yeah. yeah. I, I was talking with you earlier and we were talking about the porn industry and mm -hmm. <clears throat> clear my voice for this when I say this we were talking about the porn industry and I said I feel me personally I feel like and, and this is nothing because you know what it doesn't really matter what I say because I feel like the porn industry is still going to thrive regardless doesn't really matter people like what porn. I say I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> people like porn people so like it doesn't porn. really matter what yeah. I say but I really do feel like and I, and I know this might sound weird. I really feel like they rob the workers. Like well, it's we don't really, get a big piece of the pie if we're shooting for studios. That's for goddamn sure. Yeah. We don't, you know, traditionally in adult content, unlike a lot of other entertainment, there is no residuals. Like you go to work, you get paid for that day of work, you get your paycheck, and that's it. You'll never get paid for that scene again. Yeah. So unless you're creating and owning your own content, you're working in a way like paycheck to paycheck, you know, and that might be fine, but you know, you got two choices if that's your income strategy. Porn performers have a ridiculously short lifespan. You know, I've been incredibly blessed. So if you think you're gonna work for like five years, which would be almost a miraculously long lifespan, you have to take whatever money you think you're gonna make in those years and make sure that that money lasts you pretty much the rest of your life because mm -hmm. unless you're incredibly like entrepreneurial, like people don't hire retired porn performers for the most part, mm -hmm. at least not in high-end jobs. So I think that's really something that like anyone like looking to get into the industry has to think about. Like, might you make a good amount of money for a few years? Y you might. But like, then what? Like, what do you want your future career to be? Most, I think it's like statistically harder to get a job as a retired female porn star specifically than it is for a convict to get a job. So, mm. you know, there, there is a major stigma. So mm. I usually discourage, like I love my job what if and I would think, do it again, well, but I discourage people from getting into it. Well, let's think of it like this. I don't think we can like, I wouldn't want to try to share it next to a convict because mm -hmm. You have to think about it. What if there's a man that owns his business? He finds out that she's an ex-porn star. Now he feels a little bit more easier because he feels like he can get the pussy. 
Oh yeah, all of those things you happen. Know, what if that kind of like you takes... might get fired, you might get harassed, mm -hmm. you might. I mean, you're right. Anything is possible. It's it's definitely you're going to be dealing with the choices you made for a relatively short amount of time, forever. Yeah. You know, so that's something for people to think about. And I know you say you might be able to hide it, but for me, I feel like if you want to do adult work and it matters to you what the people that are around you think, you should probably tell them first. Like yeah. before you do that scene, have those conversations. If your family's important to you, tell them, tell your friend. Like, you know, it's not something that someone should probably like find out from your second cousin's friend that, oh my God, I saw her online. Like that's gonna be I just not feel good. like for the porn industry, I feel like they're, they're really robbed. And you know, it's only a certain amount of people that's really making the, I mean, there's very, obviously- A very small percentage. I, I mean, come on, man, the girl, mm -hmm. you're obviously, there's no mouthpiece that's needed for the porn industry. It's just kind of like you're there and if you're sexy enough and you got enough characteristics about yourself mm -hmm. to be able to play that part, yeah. you're in. You're in for you however know, long that your long analytics that, work. Exactly. Yeah. For, but to see that, like get used to its maximum fucking effort, mm -hmm. potential, mm -hmm. shouldn't there be a maximum residual? Yeah, well, it's kind of like like comedy or acting or even podcasts. Like how many people start a podcast, right? right. And then how many people are you? Very few. Yeah. And I think it's the same with porn. Like I think everyone starting their podcasts hopes to be where you are right now, yeah. right? But that's just not the reality of it. Like, you know, one in, I don't know, 10, 20, 50,000 is going to make a legitimate living doing that. And it's... The same with a lot of entertainment, but the thing is, if you quit this today, you can do anything. If a pornographer quits today, they're fucked. It'd be like going to work on your first day of like being a waitress and being like, you know, I really thought I wanted to be a waitress, but after waiting tables for a day, it fucking sucks. Well, guess what? Too bad. Cause like, you ain't gonna get another job now. Like this is, that's the unusual part about pornography. It's hard to pivot out. And so I think, because of that, you see a lot of people doing it longer than they want to, and that can get dark. Yeah. You know? It's not like once you start a podcast, you're trapped here forever. You know? Where do it's you intense. See, where do you see yourself? You are the internet stepmom. I mean, you have the label. You have yeah. the crown. Yeah. <laughs> what? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Because uh, I'm the, the body, this. the body, I'm still, riding this. <laughs> I'm riding it all the way. <laughs> but, but okay, well, we need to. Okay, well, that's why we're here at the Sharp Tank. Hell yeah. That's why we're here, right? Mm -hmm. We're here to figure out where you can go tomorrow. I'm also like again in the blessed upper percentages of my career. Like, I've been. I love saving. I've you know I was brought up in a really like. Uh, financially well-off household who had was able to give me a lot of advices on how to, a lot of advice on how to save so I've already positioned myself like if I never like I broke both legs or whatever happened and I could never work another day in my life it wouldn't matter for me um, but that's I just feel like lucky. You feel like you're privileged and you just get sociability or you just stacked up like that and you just feel like I've you don't got to work again. I've been investing really well for a yeah. lot of years, you yeah. know what I mean? Tell and us then, about some of the investments. Yeah, I, oh my just God. Just a couple. Yeah. I, I mean, come on, I mean, shit. So I actually don't have, indulge, I would. Indulge. I have a financial team that invests for me, so yeah. I don't even know all of That's the different stocks sometimes. that yeah. I have. You know, I have Honestly. IRA, SEP IRA, a lot yeah. of like EFTs, different yeah. stocks that yeah. they manage for me. Well, yeah. I'll tell you this, friend to friend, know your money and where it goes. Yeah. Don't you ever just allow somebody else to just yeah. take care of your financial business. That's cool. You have people that know. Yeah, they might know things that yeah. you don't know. But you always keep a handle on how your money moves. Yeah. That's someone told me important. that. They're like, delegate uh, tasks, not knowledge. Mm. You know? Like, if you have a business, go ahead and delegate those tasks to people that if you become too busy, but try not to delegate away all of your knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're, you know, I might not be a financial expert, but you're right, you should have, like, just sort of the groundwork of keeping track of what the fuck is going on with yeah. your shit. Yeah. yeah. You ever watch that, uh, that show called Undercover Boss? No, is it good? 
I've heard of it. So I've never watched ever, it. You ever watched that show, yeah. uh, Undercover Boss? Well, I guess it's it, it based off of, you know, a person who, you know, he's in the corporate of that of that business and mm -hmm. you know he doesn't even come down to see what's really going on mm. you know so mm -hmm. he kind of stays in the office things like that well they bring him in as undercover and they mm -hmm. kind of like have him go through training and things like that so he can kind of see what's going on with his business and maybe where yeah. there need there's corrections that may be needed yeah you know and just for some of the people's stories they'll come down they'll be like man when you know i'm gonna give you twenty five thousand thirty thousand forty thousand and to watch some of these people like and my point is this to watch some of these people come down and not even know how to do even a quarter of mm -hmm. what these people do for this business yeah is astonishing yeah i believe it you know yeah. you might want to check it out yeah i will check it out undercover yeah. boss yeah <laughs> Yeah, you know, when you're back, you know, when you're at home, you know, and you're sitting there in your pajamas and you're eating some ice cream, you know, and you're sitting there, you know, doing your soccer mom shit. Mm -hmm. Wrapping you know? up my fruit roll-ups and whatnot. <laughs> you know, the things that we do. You know, <laughs> you, you came in and I asked you, I said, damn, here's my soccer mom. You said, yeah, I should have brought some fruit I snacks. I have regrets. <laughs> I have regrets. <laughs> But no, I mean, the job is good. I just always say those things because I think like a lot of people like really romanticize adult work and it's really like, for me, it's been really fucking great. And I would never go back. I w if I, you told me to go back and do it again, I would do it again. Yeah. I love it. But I just always like to say that because I have also seen, you know, I've seen more people not succeed than succeed. So, so I like to kind of give that caveat since there's not such an easy out. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. No, that's real because mm -hmm. it's really not such an easy out because once you're in, you're in. And I've tried to say this many times mm -hmm. to people, you know, where I come from, like, you can't really take that. Like, it's, it's easy to go from making $8 an hour to $20 an hour. You feel like you're winning, you're like, but wow, yeah. it's hard when you can go from making 8,000, 10,000 mm -hmm. in a day. And then they try to put you down to a $50 an hour. Wait, it just doesn't really, it fucks with you, you yeah. know? So you have to really figure out something that's a little bit more abroad than trying to just, Oh, well, if this doesn't work, I'm making money now, but if this doesn't work, I can just go yeah. grab a regular job. It's not going to feed you the same way you've that's already true. you and i think you that's get used why you, to a certain lifestyle you get yeah. used to the lifestyle yeah you if know? you let yourself you know i well, definitely don't live the lifestyle of like my current yearly income yes you do i'm gonna tell you this you know <laughs> yes, how i know I you do you know how i know me, you do because you saw my shitty car <laughs> no not even that you, it's not even that that's just not what you're into you're not yeah. into cars there's something else that right. you're into that really attracts your money Everybody gets bread, but it's just something like I might not be into. It's not. It might not be valuable to me. It might not be valuable to you, Laura. It might not be valuable, you know, to Josh Banks. Nobody that's in this building, but it's valuable to you, and you will spend your last dollar on it. What that is, I don't know. That's true. But like there's something like have, you spend like, your money ridiculous on. Ridiculous trust funds for my nieces. Like most people wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? So there, there's always it's something, something that you, spend you do your money that on. you spend your money yeah. on. It might not hold any value to me, but right. it holds a whole gold mine to you. Yeah, totally. totally. It's all mental. Totally. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mental. It is. Soccer mom. Soccer mom. It's all fucking mental. Yeah. I heard you say, I heard you say, because it kind of, it kind of frightened me for you because mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to think, cause okay, you might be into the little weird ass shit that you're fucking into. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this for y'all. I just want y'all to play it safe and, yeah. and anything that you, oh, and yeah. anything that you do, soccer mom, mm -hmm. you can play it somewhat safe. Don't put I yourself, try. but, but don't put yourself in the position to where you say, Hey, I want somebody to make me cry. You're very emotionally attached to it. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to do that. And somebody thinks that when you're really crying, you're like, hey, I just don't want to do, I don't want to be a part of this no more. They don't take it as that's what you're really saying. Yeah, that would be a disaster. That would be a horrible disaster. A disaster. And the only times that that type of shit's going to happen is off camera. And I don't want you to yeah. sit there and try to go touch that di different demographic to yeah. fuck you over because it will go past camera. You want to, well, I'm just out having a good time one night i met yeah, this handsome i met this this handsome man rolls royce smells mm -hmm. good money bought bottles he did mm -hmm. everything 
Yeah, I, they don't, can play I don't think you. I would engage in BDSM play with a stranger, personally, you for sure? me. You sure? What if you're just out one night just having a good time? I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, n a little bit of a nervous Nelly. I just, I love, you know, I Impossible. am kinky as fuck, but Impossible. I also like, like even in before porn, I never had sex with a single person that wasn't tested without a condom. Well, like uh, I am just a but nervous But can we agree to disagree Nelly. that the, your kinkiness can get the best of you? I think it That's being could promiscuous. if I weren't so neurotic. <laughs> But, but you're right, a lot of people wouldn't have sex with multiple partners with condoms. A lot of people wouldn't go to swingers clubs. Like, it's all within your own boundaries. Like, even that sentence might be, like, crazy for some people. But for me, it's within my comfort zone. So it's yeah. kind of all relative. Did you, have, did, you, did you end up having any children? No. Throughout no your kids, life? No, no? Kids, no. I've no. noticed this, right? Mm -hmm. I got to say this. Never wanted them, though. Every, every woman, you never wanted them? No. Why not? I, I, that is a really good question because growing up, I just assumed a day would come where I'm like, I want children and then I would have them. But, you know, I just kept getting older. Like, nah, I don't want them. Ah, I really don't want them. Nah, I really don't want them. And now I'm 43. So like, you know, that ship has sailed anyway. But right. I, I just still like never got the feeling that I wanted a kid. Ever thought about adoption? If I, at this point, if I decided I wanted a kid, I would adopt. 100%, because I'm a little, I'm not sure my eggs are all viable anymore. Right. I mean, I'm just saying, like, even if you but didn't totally. want to, I'm just saying, even if you didn't want to put your body through the oh, suffering at the age like of if, where you're at. Even if I didn't want to be pregnant, you're, in yeah, other words. Yeah, it's not yeah, even yeah, about yeah, being yeah, pregnant. Yeah, yeah. It's just about being able to be somebody that yeah. can be there for a child spiritually, mentally, physically. You know, yeah. financially, of course, because mm -hmm. they're going to need things, you know, just being able to be that overall parent. Thank God there are people out there like that in the world. Or because we wouldn't it's have not new you. Kids, right, it is, it's not you. Bizarrely, right. it is not me. <laughs> I mean, you know, for a long time, I'm like, well, all of my friends have babies. They love their babies. And I'm just like, no, man. Shout no. Shout out undefeated, man. No. Shout out to y'all, man. Mm -hmm. I fuck with y'all for this one, man. For real, to keep my feet comfortable yeah. through this whole mixture. Of just fucking with you. Fuck hey, with I, can I I'm say this? Hey, can I say this? Can I bring you, you back can for? Say it. Can I can I bring you back for a panel? Yeah, and what would the panel and, and, be? And, and, I said yes before I'm, I even I'm gonna, knew I'm what was sit, up. I'm, I'm just like a panel. I don't know what that well, is. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit you. It's gonna be me and you. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be me and you, and we're gonna sit with some younger females. Mm -hmm. Can I mom them hard? Can, can I just mom them and you, just like set them straight? But, but, can I use a whip? Okay, bring sorry. Bring the whip. I went too far. No, bring the I whip too through. Far, just sorry. don't be trying yeah. to do no kinky. <laughs> hey, just don't be trying to do no kinky shit and just let them no know that spanking? you. No yeah, spanking? No, because you're trying to do it on a sexual tip. And if that ain't getting no oh, bread, right, I don't want to be a part right, of it. All right, I feel you. I if feel you. If it's not it was, getting it any heart, money, though. let's remember who I am okay, now. Okay, okay. I'm okay. trying to have a, 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 a decent conversation with you and get to know mm -hmm. you. I want to know more about you. I want to bring you back. I want to be able to talk to you. With no spanking. Because I, I with no, with <laughs> none of, with none of it, with none of it. Because I think that you got a pure soul. And I think that there's more we can dive into in the future. Yeah. I really do. I, I like would love the, to talk to, especially younger women who are thinking of going into the industry. What yeah. do you, before we get out of here, what do you think the end, what do you think these girls take on as the industry today? What do you think, like from the younger girls, you see them, you're like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that, okay, that's what she thinks. That's what she thinks this shit really is. But give your perspective Ooh, of what you think the industry really stands for today. I feel like it's changed a lot in the past five years because I feel like like a lot of people, like first there was like porn and then like other entertainment. But have you noticed like in the past five years, other types of entertainers are like also doing porn? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's maybe becoming a little bit more mainstream, which I think probably is making a lot more young people uh, interested in it. So I think there's a lot more people interested in this as a career than there were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I, it seems. I just yeah. thought porn was 
it, it's uh, to me it's obviously because I, I looked into it and I was like, okay, well let me see if there's a game in here, like an end game. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you don't got the it factor, you really don't make it. You might get some gigs and make some money here and yeah, there. Everyone gets gigs. But you don't really everybody can yeah. get a gig here and too, but mm -hmm. you don't really get nowhere if you don't got that it factor. And I yeah. think that that's kind of fucked up because there's a lot of bitches that are really getting just they're they're moving on it, thinking that they're gonna make it, and all they do is just fucking end up spoiling their career. Career. Yeah, I feel like that's part of like part of that though is like like what does like our culture tell women? Like part of it is we tell ourselves to like keep ourselves like pure sexually, do all this stuff, not give your sex away. But like the flip side of that is that we're also taught that we're like like I think a lot of pe women have like an overinflated sense of like how important their vaginas are to other people, mm -hmm. and that like well I'm not making two million dollars a year doing sex work, but I'm sure the moment I showed my vagina that I would just like <laughs> make all this money. And that's like obviously absurd, but like that's kind of like the dialogue. But like, I, like these hoes are only making money because they're willing to show their vaginas, which which doesn't like but don't say you, how many failed. To, but to me, but are. to me, it's like why just show it? Do what you do, get your bread and get out. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever knew. You have to keep God. your you have to keep your population of yeah. who knows your business mm -hmm. as fucking low ratio as possible. That's a tough one with the internet, but yeah. Well, yeah. you need to figure out a better lingo. Maybe. And when you can come yeah. for it, maybe it'll get taken in the way that you want it to, and that way you can still live your life. Because if you well, think hookers about hookers, can live a lot more privately. You like hookers, don't you? I love you? hookers. You a lot love of my them. friends are I hookers. I really believe I love you a, have I love done some type of sex work outside <laughs> of this. I've stripped. And you prop, you've done some sex work outside of this. I can, I know. <laughs> you, do I look it? Do I have like the, I know. the hoe eyes? I, yes, you do. You well, got them hoe. Ho. Hey, I am a hoe. I do get you paid are, for sex. Hey, I know you didn't did your thing mm -hmm. once or twice because it just if kept it sticking legal, out to me when I, I was watching this mm -hmm. shit. It just kept standing out to me as I'm watching. I'm like, man, she's got a real fucking fascination with <laughs> ladies I of the night. That. I love and it. And she likes to keep it classy. She plays a role. Mm -hmm. She's got a role for him. Got a gimmick. <laughs> I don't know. Like maybe, maybe it's just the fantasy. But like, I do have a few hooker friends, and it seems like a pretty cool job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll it might tell not you be this. my job, but it's it, a cool but job. But I'll tell you this. <laughs> You ever think about crossing over? <laughs> it might work out for you because you Honestly, know last time it doesn't time, pay that well. well like it pays you, little okay, do you know, but like, little do you know. And last time I checked, <laughs> man, happy hoeing is the best thing going. Happy hoeing. We about to get ready to get <laughs> up out of here, man. Hey, <laughs> we about to get ready to get up out of here, man. <laughs> hey, man, the sharp tank, Deville. <laughs> the one that don't like to steal. <laughs> hey, man, we out this motherfucker. I love you, baby. Oh, we gone, you. church. Shoot us out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. So cute.